everybody, it's Lynn Pratt. Thanks for joining me. Today I am doing a color test between Holbein's Yellow Ochre and Raw Sienna. They're both very similar colors and I'm working on a painting and I'm trying to decide which one I'm going to use. So first I've wet two squares on my paper and I'm gonna do a wet into wet application with both colors and just see how they spread, if they spread evenly, if those little fingers, those little rivers of paint come through, if it gets to be a nice even wash to see how granulated the color becomes. Things like that are important when you're working on a painting. So sometimes you have two colors that seem like they're interchangeable, but maybe they're actually not because they have different qualities of lifting versus staining or granulation or how they spread in a wash. Sometimes when you add a color, it just goes right across the water. And sometimes when you add a color, it kind of, it's a heavier pigment and stays where it is. So depending on which pigment you're using, even though they're very similar, sometimes they work completely differently. Now, I often use raw sienna instead of yellow ochre, so I thought even though they're super similar, I would just try a couple tests to see what make them different, if anything does it all, besides having just a slightly different pigment. So I have my wet into wet, and then I'll take some wet onto dry paper, and I'll start with it dark, and I'll just slowly add water to it, and lighten it up to fade it, make a gradient as it goes across, and just see the different values that are in it. Sometimes colors separate a little bit more, sometimes the pigments settle a little bit more, and only in different ways when you're using it can you actually see those different characteristics. Sometimes one's able to get darker without getting super thick and gummy, while other ones when you get it to its darkest value, it seems very opaque. So again, different things for different colors. So this color got a lot darker, the raw sienna, than the yellow ochre, even though they seem like very similar colors. So even though the grading goes across, you can see the subtle variations. This one has a little bit more of a reddish hue to it. It's a little bit more of a brighter color. This one's a little bit more of the actual yellow. So even when it gets to its darkest, that's when you can really see the change in the colors. So if I had just done the first square, you really can't see that much of a difference. But when you're doing it like this, you can see that there is quite a variety to the color. So it's simple things like this that help you decide which color that you want to use for a certain application. Whether you can see how light it gets, I'll also let these both dry completely and then test lifting on them. Now that my paint is dry, you can see a much bigger difference between the raw sienna and the yellow ochre. You can see that the raw sienna is much more granulated because the pigment must be heavier and therefore it settles into the cold pressed paper a little bit more. And then you get that different textured look where the yellow ochre is much smoother and doesn't settle as much and you get a much more even wash. So you can see in the lower part where I put it onto the dry paper, you can see that this one has a lot more texture to it where this is a lot smoother. Therefore, if you're doing something that has texture like barn boards or rough areas, this would be the perfect color to use. Where if you're doing something that just has a nice smooth wash like a sky or something like that, then yellow ochre would be the easier and better color to use for that. So these colors are not necessarily interchangeable. You would really use them for different reasons. The other test to do on them is their lifting. So I have my simple lifting brush here and I'm just gonna go over the raw sienna with a little bit of water. Now I'm not scrubbing hard at all. I'm just adding my water and gently lifting. I have a clean paper towel and I'll just come through and see how much that color lifts out. I'm gonna come over and do the same thing to the yellow ochre and see if it lifts in a similar fashion. Sometimes when you're planning a painting, your plan is to lift out color at the end or lift out some highlights. So it's important to know if the color that you're using 
actually is going to do that before you get to the end of the painting. So they do both lift pretty easily, not all the way back to white paper, but it does look like the raw sienna is a slightly easier lift than the yellow ochre. However, they're both pretty similar, and you do know that you could get pretty light back. However, raw sienna does get a little bit lighter. So if your plan is to paint in and then lift out a highlight at the end, raw sienna would be a much better color to use than the yellow ochre. So I hope this helps you decide how you're going to choose colors to plan for a painting. Um, I do this lots of times when I have a similar color and I need certain qualities of it in a certain painting. So thanks so much for joining me. Let's paint.